What's good everybody? My name is Alchemy. Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be doing a neuro base from scratch via the grid, which should be the last major first party synth. I say that because we're kind of skipping over polysynth. It's a great thing and all that. It's just kind of super basic in comparison to the other stuff. So we are going to be kind of just wrapping things up with the biggest, possibly the biggest feature that Big has to offer, especially if you're into modular design. So I'm aiming to answer the question on whether or not Bitwig has the capability to make like quote unquote professional sounds out of the box. And the obvious answer is yes. But the other side of that is I want to show you a process of how you can go about that. Don't worry so much about trying to copy the sound exactly. Let's learn the mechanics of the synthesizer and then have fun making your own stuff even if you don't think that it sounds as good, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's a whole different video topic. So yeah. Like and subscribe. Um, you guys can always check out the sounds that I have for offer on my website if you do want access to the stuff that I make. And I don't know what I'm going to be doing, so skip to the end of the video if you just want to see what it comes out. Let's talk about the grid. The grid is a modular environment that is ever expansive and is only limited by your imagination and your CPU. The amazing thing about this is that you can essentially build theoretically just about anything within this particular work environment except for maybe like you know interfaces and, and like actual like sense and stuff in that manner but as far as like building your own reverb you can do it you want to build your own compressor you can do it you want to build your own neuro base generator we're gonna do it and that is kind of like the most free and limiting thing about this i think the only next step after that would be like <laughs> i don't know programming now the grid is simplified. It's wonderful because everything has like a nice color pop to it. And we have a signal chain that goes from a source to some kind of envelope or modulator rather amplitude modulator to an output. So everything goes this way. You can definitely set it to be wherever it is that you want, but I like to keep everything from left to right, just so that way you guys can keep track of what's going on. So if I play a note on this, then it's just a triangle wave. And there's a lot of different ways that we can start by getting a reset out of this. And I'm going to show you each one. Hopefully this isn't crashing. Okay, we're good. So the first way that we can get a respace out of this is to actually click on the modulator and duplicate this. And then we want to grab a mixer channel. And I'm going to actually grab this here and place the envelope after. And the reason why I do that is so that way I don't have to have multiple envelopes on each one. There are use cases for why you might want to do one or the other, but let's just focus on this for now. Now, if I play this, it's going to be stacked. It's going to be twice as loud. But if I detune one of them, maybe like this much, then we get our typical Reese. We can also play within the different oscillator types that we have. I'm not gonna go through each one. I'm just going to actually skip ahead into the wavetable because this is gonna kill two birds with one stone. But what we're gonna do with this one is turn this one off and take a look at what we have with this little guy, which is our unison settings. So we can also get a detune sound by changing the unison settings here to where you can adjust the detuning and the spread. You can also change between these three different unison settings, but something that you might not have seen is over here, we have a phase distribution, which is also pretty cool. I don't know what these mean exactly. There is a description whenever you highlight over this, but just know that it sounds a little bit different. Let me change to something that has a little bit more harmonics, so that way you can actually tell the difference. To me, I can't personally tell the difference, but I know that this is resetting the phase in these ways. And so this is something that you can use to basically decide how you want to, you can keep everything within a specific phase, or basically you can kind of distribute it in a way that is like, this one is, it spreads it out. This one is in the middle. This one is everything is aligned in that sense. And so that's something that you might want to choose to do because not every Reese is built the same. They're all just as valuable, but not quite the same. So yeah, you have a bunch of different options here, which is really cool, but there is also one more option that we can choose with this, which is turning this off. If you click on the polygrid right here, you've also got voice stacking, which is going to give you a completely different kind of like expression of how the saw waves are expressed. That's redundant, sorry. But you go over here and you adjust this to say like 30, and then you change the voice stacking on here to like, let's say just two and notice how this sounds now. 
Let's adjust that a little bit more to like 0.3 maybe. So the amazing thing about this is that there's so many different ways to even just like accumulate a different kind of Reese or to accumulate different means of detuning that it's always interesting in that way, even when you're using simple waveforms. Because of these choices that you have, it influences probably the most important part, which is the source. And once you have that, then going into everything or doing your like quote unquote processing is just a matter of stacking filters and distortion types and then you know doing subtle nuance changes. So speaking of, what I'm gonna do is actually just leave this on here and we only really need one oscillator for this, but what I am going to do is detach this and I'm gonna turn this back on now, but we're gonna to to figure out how to do FM, which is taking the output of the wavetable of any kind of oscillator and adding it to the purple guy right here. Now, whenever I click on this or whenever I play a note, it's not gonna do anything, but whenever I turn the knob up, you're gonna see that we're gonna be introducing phase modulation. It is like FM, PM, whatever, it's not that big of a deal. Pretty sick. Now, there is something that's very unique about this that I wanna discuss, and what that is, is actually, it might be uh, also in vital, but you can actually change where the table positions are if you spread this out with a unison. So what that means is that you can modulate the index, which the index is where this is, and figure out, uh, like, it, you kind of just have to listen to it on its own. Like, how fat does that sound just from doing that? And so, like, even if you just take this and use this as your source and do outside processing, I still think that it's worth, in many cases, to uh, implement just the source sound. And I don't know why, but when it comes to the wavetable generator within the grid, it sounds fat as heck, um, and I and it sounds great. Now, if you unfortunately have a lame CPU, you might want to be mindful of that. But man, this is just so thick, and it's a great place to start because that's what you want whenever it comes to making fat bases. Now, you can change the wavetable. You can absolutely use your own. Unfortunately, the grid does not have a way that you can make your own wavetable. But you know, just download Vital, or if you have Faceplant, you can make stuff in that. But when it comes to this, like once we have our main sound, then we're pretty much just gonna go through our normal process, which is distort, filter, distort, filter, blah, blah, blah. Now, one thing that I will say with this though, is that you can actually do some signal splitting here in order to create some different variations or even do frequency splitting if you want. So let's try that. So I'm gonna grab a high pass here and I'm going to connect this to the output here by making sure that this is highlighted. And then let me pull this out so that way we can try to not be as confusing as possible. The index has to go to the envelope and you can figure out where these things go just by most of the time matching the color coordination. This in particular is one unique use case of the FM of course, but you know that's not that big of a deal. So this is currently going to the high pass right now and I'm just going to right click this, sorry, triple click this, one, two, three, and I'm going to set a value of Let's do a cutoff at 140. So that means that everything above 140 is going to be cut off here. But now what we can do is we can actually click on this and duplicate it. And now we've split the signal and I can right click this and change this into a low pass. And now this is at 140 as well. You can see here that this is blocked. So nothing is going outside of that. So we're just gonna add that here. And now we've got a very simple band split of everything that's above 140, everything that's below 140. You can go a step further and go into a band pass if you want. And what you might even wanna do is right click this. Actually, let's just go ahead and add another one. So we're gonna option this like so, and then right click, and then we can go into something like uh, XP because I know that there's a band pass on this. So we can go band pass four, and then you can set this to be your mid signal and then pull this up to be your highest signal. But I don't really think that's all that important right now. So with two signals, this is our sub, this is just gonna go directly outward. And that's all we really need that for. But all of this stuff, everything above 140, we can start to implement different kinds of filters and stuff that will go in serial. So the first thing that I'm going to do is type in shaper here, and we are going to find something that sounds nice. 
So I'm actually going to solo this and we can just focus on everything that's in the high end and let's just drag in the first one and see what that sounds like. Okay, that actually sounds pretty sick. So what I'm gonna do now is right click this and then we are going to go into LFO or random rather and I am going to add in a sample and hold LFO. <clears throat> this should be our typical modulator here. And we can do this either here or on the outside of this by clicking in random. So you'll see that it doesn't really matter how you want to approach it. You can do it this way, escape. You can also do it this way by clicking on the key and applying this. But I'm just going to use this within the grid so that way you can kind of see what's going on and then move this out of the way. I will try to be as organized as possible. <laughs> um, it's not always possible just because the nature of the grid can get messy, but hopefully you're able to kind of follow along to see that we've got our source, it's got FM, and then we're spreading the table out, and then we've got our band split here. Let me move this stuff over a bit so we have more space to work with. So now that we've got something like that, then we're just gonna go into like a normal filter process. And I wish that this had like some kind of EQ built into it, but unfortunately you don't, so you have to do like your typical filtering which is fine, but it would help if I could just use like a parametric and like do five steps in one particular module. Uh, but within this, we are going to right click and change this into an XP. And the XP is what I usually go for because we have way more options, but we're just gonna apply a notch here. Dude, that's so fat, that's so nice. I'm gonna change the key tracking down on this and then I'm going to duplicate this guy and then now what we can do is start to pull these into different filters and stuff. And maybe we can even change the resonance of this. And now we're kind of just getting into the same thing, which is distortion, filtering, distort, filter, distort, filter, blah, blah, blah. So let's take a listen to what that sounds like. You can also add drive on this if you want. Uh, I'm gonna leave it as is, but just know that that's an option. But now what we can do is we can duplicate this again and connect these two. And then you have to make sure that you connect that out. I think there's a more efficient way to do that, but it's fine. But what we can do is pretty much use the same filter, but change the direction of which this is going. Or what we can also do is double click off of these and flip them. So that way, this one, the first one is gonna move the filter, and the second one is going to adjust the resonance. I'm gonna actually move that in opposition, so that way it'll be a little bit more up. And what I'm gonna to try to do is give these just a little bit of crossover, but not so much, so that way they kind of interact with each other and create a relationship. <laughs> Now keep in mind, this is still the mid to high band. So once we implement this, it should sound complete. Pretty sweet. So now from here, we can pretty much do this as many times as we want. So we can grab a saturator, but the cool thing about this is that the expression or like the chain really opens up because we can do this kind of like frequency splitting or signal splitting as much as we want to. And even though I would say that multi-pass and snap heap are a little bit more streamlined, if you're trying to do a combination of both, then this becomes relatively simple. So we're adding just a little bit of saturation over here. I'm gonna drive it by like three dB. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna split this again. And this one is gonna go into, I'm just gonna type in XP, a bandpass filter, kind of like so. And I'm just gonna grab one of these, modulate it here. Then I'm going to grab another XP here, kind of like this. Oh, I messed up. Let me undo that. I'm gonna grab another one here and we're gonna split that signal and go here. Now there's a couple of different options that you can do here. I think if you do merge, then it will actually like change it to a mono signal. So I wouldn't really recommend that. I think I'm just gonna use another mix tool on this and I'm gonna send this one to the outside just like that and then I'm gonna send these two in here because there might be more stuff that we want to control with that so again we've got those two splits I just or actually this one is split here this one's split here this is our sub so can we rename this we can we can just label this as sub 
and then we can rename that as high bound. And then let's color code this, which is also really fun. I love that you can color code things. That is extremely helpful. So I'm gonna label this as yellow, and then this is red. Now, uh, this also needs to be yellow. So from this, we've got a different split now. This one is kind of doing its own thing at the moment, but we're gonna change this into a band pass. And this is gonna kind of just sweep those mids right there. And then this one in particular can kind of do the opposite to where you can have like a giant notch. That's just nothing but here. And you can have these move in opposition of each other. So really what we're doing is just creating more interesting movement in between this giant piece of like destructive noise in order to get something that is relatively interesting. So let's go ahead and take a listen to how that sounds. Sweet, okay. Now, because this is relatively noisy and stuff, one thing that we're going to do is back off of the saturation just a bit. I'm also gonna lower this. Or maybe, yeah, maybe lower this. That kind of tamed the sound. And then finally, I'm going to add in one more filter over here, which will be just a, another low pass or something. Now keep in mind, there are so many different modules in here and it would definitely be a shame not to show you all of them, but unfortunately I don't really have the time or the energy to go through everything in order to build the ultimate crazy base. But I do kind of want to show you a concept about how you can go about creating something very simple. And you can even send the entire chain through the entire signal if you wanted to, but this is just a way that you can start to build these kinds of sounds in a very easy manner. So now that we have that, we can automate this. So maybe let's go ahead and do a completely independent modulator here and just kind of let that roll. And that's gonna go all the way down, let's say maybe into something like that. So now this is gonna kind of rotate in and out and create like cool morphing sounds. Now, the other thing that I totally did not touch on, which you can absolutely do, and maybe we will like implement this a little bit here and there, is that with the new Bitwig update, we've got other stuff like the new Chorus Plus, the new Flanger Plus, the new Phaser Plus, and so we'll add that as well to this band. We are gonna do some processing on the outside of this, but just as a means of getting you started within a mono signal, like you don't have to go very far. The other thing that I wanted to talk about as well is that sometimes you will have to pull modulators out of from, from this. So for example, I don't think that, yeah, I wanted to see, I'm sure that there's a way that you can actually do that, but I don't particularly know. I'm not claiming to be an expert on the grid. It's just how it is. But what we can do is we can grab a key tracker let me actually type in key track and see if that's a module on here. Keys on, no, okay. So we're gonna use key tracking on this. And the reason why is because we're gonna use this to modulate the speed of whatever it is that we do. To make this a little bit easier, I'm going to grab a macro. And you guys are just gonna to have to bear with me with making all this stuff complicated or whatever. So uh, feel free to rewind the video and all that. But hopefully like, I just want you guys to have fun with me. And that's, I don't care if you, you know, get 100% of it or 20% of it, just use this as a means to kind of have fun exploring the sound aspect. But what we're gonna do from this is set this to the speed of these pitches here. So I'm going to click on this by one, two, click on this here. Okay, fine. I'll do it manually to one. Then I'm gonna do it to one again, maybe one. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it's fine. And then I'm going to drag this to one as well. Now, the reason why I have this as in bipolar is because now that we have this, we can modulate this, I want this to go down maybe, and change this to where if the pitch goes up, this plays faster, if the pitch goes down, it plays slower. So let's set our root note to like F zero, D sharp zero, that's what I've been writing a lot of tunes in. And now whenever we play this, it's gonna change the speed based off the pitch to match the detuning, at least get close to matching the detuning of that. I'm 
Okay, so that's actually slowing down, so I had it right the first time. So we'll push this up. Let's go ahead and push it up all the way, just to be extreme and see what it does. So one thing that's important to realize with this is that if you double this <laughs> in, and it's in time mode, then it's actually going to slow it down. So I had it right the other way. Now let's go ahead and play this higher. There we go. So that now it's too far. And this is just some of those quirks that you'll have to like kind of get past. But it's weird because if you actually set this to hertz, then if you push it up, it's going to go faster. Whereas if you have it set to an actual bar, if you double it, then that means that it's going to be twice as long or take twice as long to complete like the LFO curve or whatever. So uh, just keep that in mind. Pretty sick. So let's go ahead and have some more fun. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another LFO here. And you can do as many of these as you want, or you can keep them all the same because the goal is to have some kind of relationship between the two. But what I'm going to do with this one is change the index. And I'm going to set this to bipolar. So now this is going to sweep in this way between a bunch of different things, but I'm going to make this a lot slower. So I'm going to just set this to half bar. So now we have this wave table that this is FMing to this. And in conjunction with all of these filters, we're getting more well, cool stuff. sick. So now let's go ahead and add a little bit more interest to this. We're going to bring back that high end in just a bit because I know that we're cutting some of it off. But let's go back to that initial idea that I had with the chorus. And we're just going to maybe place this. Mm, let's do that here. And the reason why I'm choosing this is because I don't want to split the signal again. And I also don't want this to only be on one of these splits. I want it to be the filtering then it goes into the mixer and then both of those are combined into the chorus plus here. So what I'm gonna do with this is I like the eight voices thing. It's just pretty awesome. And I'm gonna turn the width down here and I'm gonna turn the depth up, turn down the feedback and then adjust the speed. And the reason why is because you kind of just have to listen to it, but these are just the settings that I generally go to because it's gonna make it sound kind of washy. So take a listen whenever I add the mix here. Let's adjust the feedback a bit and then let's adjust the depth. So it's kind of like not only smoothing the sound out, but it sounds really pleasing, at least to me, of how that interacts with it. So what I'm going to do is grab maybe this one. And yeah, whenever the distortion interacts, then we can adjust the mix to like 50%. So then we've got something that again makes the sound more complex and can potentially add a little bit of stereo if you want it to. I say that the width is at zero, but if you want to, you can always adjust the width. And I, the other thing that you can cover is that I don't generally is that you can always set a new mapping macro or something if you wanna make like a specific manual change. I like randomizers just because, well, look at this thing. It's starting to become a little bit of a monster and it's really fun to just like push a button and watch everything go. So, so far this is what we have. So we're already getting something that is somewhat morphing and we can kind of take this further if we want by adjusting with the phaser or a flanger or whatever. But for me, like these tools that I'm using are relatively basic. And even though I did say that we're creating a monster or something like I don't really use a lot of like crazy different stuff in order to get something interesting. It's more about just understanding the theory about building harmonics and then finding interesting ways to cut them. And that's what you use to create kind of like vocal stuff and then you play a low register and boom there's your neurobase uh <laughs> neurobase 101 subscribe to the channel so 
Because we have that though, we always can mess with other things. We can adjust the phaser. I'm going to make this purple because that is how I see a phaser now. It's like forever embedded that a phaser is supposed to be purple. I don't know. Leave me alone. But now that we have something like that, we can add just a little bit of stereo by turning this on. And we can also flip the phase by clicking on that guy there. And this is cool because this gives you like way more options. And the phaser plus is something that I've already covered in another video, but you have so many things that you can change about this. Like for one, there's four different modes naturally. Then you can change between stereo and not stereo. You can flip the phase, but then looking over here on the left, you've also got four different options that you can choose as well. So you've got phaser speaking and then barber uh, positive and then barber negative. And just in, instead of thinking about what that does exactly, just play with them and find the one that you like. That's the best way I can explain that. And then add some randomization to it to make it fun. So I'm just going to play with the mix a little bit. And then I'm also going to play with the depth because the depth is what's going to kind of help me create that vowel type shape. There will be a point possibly where you won't be able to tell the difference. So sometimes by making things really extreme or turning other stuff off, you can start to hear how it changes, but that's just a way you can kind of keep track. And again, because we're making copies of this, I have found that I have done myself a favor. And within all these modulators here, even if I duplicate it, it's still mapped the speed to the rate here. So I can always adjust it or turn it down or whatever. So if it's too slow at this pace, you can change it. And now, Even still, it's already doing some cool like morphing things or whatever, and that sounds really cool to me. So now let's go ahead and hop into the next piece of this to where we are going to split this into a low high via an FX2. And unfortunately for me, I still feel like I have to do some stuff on the outside of this. So this is kind of where you get into like your more conventional means of processing, but you can spend as much time on this as you want especially when building things, I typically don't need to. Like the filtering and then the chorus and phaser are pretty much all you need to create some cool stuff. And now we're just going to use the outside effects to streamline this process. Now for me, I have a typical low high split of, we're just gonna do 140 again-ish and make sure that your low end is in mono. And then everything on the high band is kind of free game. So the first thing I'm going to do because I want to create a flanging sound is not use a flanger. <laughs> if you change this here, you turn the width down and then you adjust the speed though, this will actually make a tearing sound. Depending on which kind of voice you use. So you can see that by adjusting these here that you can get a lot of different effects. One thing to also give a shot for is using the original chorus. So don't think that this is obsolete just because we've got an update. Turn the mix up on this all the way, turn the delay down to uh, as low as it can go rather, and then play with the LFO speed of how fast it washes through and see what that does. And suddenly we've got that flanging sound that I was just talking about. Cool. So we are losing a little bit from that. So I am just going to add a little bit more saturation here. And that's why I'm kind of dictating this decision. And that's, I wanted to show you this process to show you how I navigate and why I make choices in the places that I do. And in this particular instance, I've noticed that with the chorus standing on its own, we got a cool effect, but we also lost some stuff. So within this, I'm going to use the saturation to try to bring some of it back. And that's how we'll navigate into figuring out, you know, what the next piece of this will be to keep it cool. Okay. 
So let's see what happens if we actually do a pitch bin with this by just adjusting this, but uh, sometimes you'll get cool stuff, sometimes you won't. Let's see what happens. It's getting there, but it still needs a little bit more crunch. So let's go ahead and boost the high end a bit, uh, or sorry, the loud sound a bit. And then if we wanted to go into more filtering, which I'm not going to do, I kind of just want to show you that at any point in this stage, you can go into a parametric EQ and set some points here to go into more complex filtering um, and do like boosts and gains and stuff. But that's just an intro. Uh, I have a lot of information about that with just about every neural base that I do. But what I am going to do instead is figure out how to bring a little bit more crunch out of this. And I'm going to start by adding an amp. Now the amp is really cool because it is weird. <laughs> I think that's the best way to explain it. To me, it sounds nothing like an actual like amp slash cabinet, but it does have its own character that you can create more movement and more cool and interesting things from. So one trick that I'm going to show you is I am going to add another randomizer on this. And we are going to grab the frequency here. Sorry, I had to remember what I was wanting to do. Again, I'm doing this on the fly, so forgive me. But what we can do with this is we can drag the middle signal down like this, and you'll see that this will actually bounce in between. So we can create this opposition of these, say here, and create this addition of this to where we're boosting the low and mid of the signal. And now we just need to push them up a little bit more to where they are crossing over with each other, which is kind of fun. I'm gonna set this to smooth. I'm going to set this to free. And then I'm going to map the rate here to this one as well. So I think I'm gonna map it just upwards again. Hold on one second. Oh, right, so one thing to consider is if you are having a hard time with this and it's not working, just drag this into the nested effects and now this should be working. There we go. So I'm gonna drag that down. Remember, if you go down, that means it's gonna make it faster when you play a higher pitch. And the easiest way to solve that, again, is to just go hertz, so that way it's in the actual value. If you find that it's going slower when you play a higher pitch, just reverse it or play around with it. But now we've added another extra layer of distortion to this. And I'm going to see and play around with the class A, which is just basic. Sorry, I'm gonna go with smooth. This is just analog, I guess, most likely just saturation, but let's take a listen. So now that does sound a little bit more like an amp. I'm gonna turn the sag up and adjust the bias. If your stuff sounds super crunchy, then this is usually the first knob I go for. So sometimes by adjusting that, you can get some pretty interesting stuff. then I'm gonna adjust the mix a bit because we're losing some mids here. You can adjust a cabinet if you want. You can flip the phase of it and then adjust the cabinet size and see if you wanna do something interesting like that. I typically do not because, well. Okay, whatever, that sounds pretty cool. That's why it's important to experiment and discuss and that's the beauty of doing this stuff from scratch is not really knowing what you're going to get. So the last two things that I'm going to do is the first one, I am going to add a reverb to this. I'm gonna use the stock reverb here, but I'm just gonna pull up a preset just because there's one that I like. Room one, I think, let's go with Space Hall. And the reason why is because I could talk about how this reverb works and stuff, but basically you just wanna mess around with it until you find something that's cool. But I'm gonna keep the mix here, um, no, I'm gonna keep the mix at zero. Sorry about that. And then I'm gonna add another randomizer here. And one thing with this is that I'm adding randomizers to each individual effect, but you can always just add one here and then apply it to all the other different things. There really is no right or wrong, but this is a bit. This is actually like a benefit or a feature that other synthesizers or workflows don't always like have the availability for. So it's important that you understand like you can do one or the other or both. Um, and this makes it very easy to do so. I'm gonna adjust the mix here in this way. So now this is going to come in and out at certain pieces of time. And then again, I'm going to map the rate here to adjust in this way. 
So that way, again, whatever note I'm playing, this is all going to match in the same speed together. So that way we're reinforcing that relationship between the effects, even though they all have independent modulators. And the last thing that I think I'm going to do is we are going to add in a filter here and just use a low pass and pretty much do the same thing. I'm just gonna turn this on because this is my thing by default. Set that to free and then turn this up. Now this is actually set to Hertz. So I'm gonna boost this one and make that faster whenever we play at a higher pitch. And again, the reason why is because that way um, it'll speed up whenever you play a higher pitch in that manner. So we can pull down the resonance on this and I want this to go up as high as it can go. So that way it opens up and we're added just a little bit of post drive, which is just kind of like some distortion. It's gain, but you're kind of doing the same thing, especially when you push it into a limiter. So let's see how this sounds and see if it's any cool. pretty nice. I think it's cool, but it's a little bit much on the reverb side of things. So we want to maybe reduce the size a bit and add a little bit of pre-delay. That's a lot of pre-delay. Let's turn the diffusion up a bit and then we're going to reduce the buildup. And this is pretty much just like trying to control the space and you do have a lot of cool options and stuff, but I also want the high end reverb to come through this as well. This isn't really quite an EQ. It more dictates how much space is here, how much space is here and how much space is here. So you can adjust that to say like, well, this is where your low cuts off. This is where your high cuts off and then everything in between. So let's see what this sounds like now. And again, don't worry about copying this, just adjust it to something that sounds interesting if you're following along. I might have slowed this down, so I think I did. So again, we kind of made that mistake. So let's push that up because I want that to go faster. There we go. Sweet. So you can see that like the key to this and the nuance behind this or like the taste factor of this is to adjust these filters in such a way to where it creates the kind of vowels that you're happy with when it comes to the, excuse me, the random interactions. And unfortunately, like I can't really teach you that because you're going to have to listen to it and find whatever it is that you like. But by showing you how all of these effects and components work together, you can kind of adjust them and open and change certain positions of the filter to try to tweak it to your own liking. Now, the final stage of this would be to maybe add in some dynamics and a limiter. And what the dynamics is going to do is just boost up the high end. So we're going to lower the ratio up here on the high threshold and then maybe reduce the high threshold just a bit. And you wanna be really careful with this because this is a like really fast way to like make your stuff too sharp and stingy. Oh, sorry, we don't wanna use that. We're gonna use a regular limiter instead. And what we're gonna do to help kind of try to control this is we're gonna grab this peak limiter here and set the ceiling to minus two, at least minus two, maybe minus four at first. So we can kind of just test that there and see what that does. But when you lower the threshold like that, you're actually going to boost the signal whenever it gets louder than what's coming in. And so this is a great way to kind of like pseudo create a one-stop shop OTT. You can do like three different bands or whatever. I don't think that's necessary. Just boost the high end just a little bit in this way and then you can kind of figure out the rest from there. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, so now that you have that, the signal is turned down and maybe it's not as interesting or whatever, but once you have that and you know that this is relatively safe, then you can bring this back up and adjust this into your mix. Typically, whenever I apply stuff like this, it's at like 2.0. And now that you have this diverse, complex patch, you can always come into this stuff and add changes or turn things off if you don't want to. So you can always do something like this. And then, of course, you can do what we always do at the end of these patches, which is pull up a multi-pass preset, something like this, and just kind of find one of your awesome, you know, filters from alchemy.com, maybe like the basilisk filter or something. No idea what this is going to sound like. Turn the random depth up, turn this up, and then see what happens. <laughs> I think I'm boosting the low end a little bit too much. So yeah, you can kind of just go through all of these or whatever and have some fun. And like, this is kind of just like how to get you started. And then you can always go and add in your third party effects and whatnot after, but that's pretty much it. This is how I do just about every base anyways. And this gives you a lot of flexibility and control. And I want to make a very clear point that this is just one way to do this within the grid using very limited effects. So please keep that in mind. However, in order to have a lot of places to explore, whether it be through the modular outlook or through the actual device kind of chains and stuff like that, uh, please just have fun exploring and don't worry about it sounding exact. I wouldn't even say that this is one of my best bases, but it's still really fun to make. And you can always go in and make changes and stuff and use this as like a tool to kind of have a starting point and then explore to like put different modules on, put different effects on and see how it changes the sound. Don't go for the right choice, go for the wrong choice, because that's how you're going to learn stuff. So thank you guys for joining me with this. I had a great time putting this together. I don't think that I want to spend any more of your time other than invite you to check out my website where I offer tons of presets and faceplant bitwig. Uh, there's a free vital pack that I recently put out. Or if you want to know more information about all this stuff, book a lesson with me, consider joining for the memberships. There's lots of stuff that I have that uh, are useful resources to you. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think and much love to you all. I will see you all in a different video. Bye.